Let's zoom out a bit from this disastrous weather to our changing climate. It's too soon to know precisely what's behind this weekend's tornadoes, but the Gulf of Mexico is rather warm right now. It is at temperatures usually seen in the summer. This affects states including Arkansas, Tennessee, Missouri, and Kentucky. Also, the central southern U.S. has had record afternoon highs in the 70s and 80s. But behind this warm pocket of air, a winter front. See all that blue coming in from the west next to where all those record highs were? And that is a formula for disaster. Springtime highs mixed with a wintry blast. As many as 60 reported tornadoes formed. Now, let's be clear. Climate change is real, but the research on these storms is still underway. The administrator of FEMA was hesitant to take a stance on these tornadoes, at least not yet. I don't know if it's directly related to climate change, but what I do know is that we're seeing an increase in the number of storms and the severity of storms, and we have to take a concerted effort um, for FEMA to help communities start to reduce the impacts that they're seeing from these severe weather events. Joining us now is Dr. Michael Mann. He's a distinguished professor of atmospheric sciences at Penn State. Professor Mann, welcome. Uh, thanks, Joshua. It's good to be uh, with you. What do you make of these storms, particularly as it relates to the possible impact of climate change? I presume it's too soon to know just yet, but what do you see? Well, you sort of laid out some of the relevant factors here. The fact that the Gulf of Mexico is as warm as it is. And there are certain things that we can say with some confidence. I mean, the global oceans have warmed more than a degree over the past century, and that's because of carbon pollution from fossil fuel burning, the warming of the planet. So the Gulf of Mexico wouldn't have been as warm as it is. And for each degree of warming, you get 7% more moisture in the atmosphere. That's actually basic physics. So there's more moisture, there's more heat. That provides the turbulent energy to create thunderstorms, then, as you described, you've got this front coming through. You've got the jet stream colliding with that. That's what gives it the spin. So you've got the energy, the turbulence and the energy and climate change, global warming, very warm oceans, 70s and 80s in the southern half of the country. That wouldn't be happening if not for the warming of the planet. So climate change is clearly involved in that factor. The second factor is the jet stream. It comes into contact with the jet stream. That gives it the rotation. That gives it the spin. Those two factors together produce tornadoes. And one of the things that we can look at is the trend in the data over the past several decades. What we're seeing is that the maximum intensities of these tornadoes are increasing as we would expect them to. We're also right. seeing much larger outbreaks. Um, and th those, those trends are pretty robust in the data. So when you look at this event, it has the classic signature of what climate change is doing here. What about the locations where these storms broke out? Are we expecting the areas in the country that tend to get tornadoes to shift or to grow over time with climate change? Or do we just expect them to strike in more or less the same areas with greater intensity? Yeah, this is a great question. And you know, uh, there's a little bit of good news for you in Texas and Oklahoma. Um, we see tornadoes sort of shifting away from that region. So we might actually see a decrease in tornadoes in that region, but it's a pretty small region over part of, uh, you know, part of Texas, part of Oklahoma. And instead what we see is an increase over a large part of the Eastern United States. And particularly in the winter months, we're seeing a very sharp increase in tornado activity in December, January, February. And so the trends are complicated. There are different things happening in different places. You've got wind shear that's involved. El Nino is playing a role in all of this. But behind all of it is this moving baseline of a warmer planet that is exacerbating all of those factors and leading to these larger outbreaks and more destructive storms. This all seems pretty dire. I know for some people it feels pretty hopeless that we're kind of past a point of no return for storms like this, and this is just the kind of thing we're going to have to learn to live with. I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we know from the science in terms of the cyclical nature of storms? Sometimes there are periods where storms are bad for a long period of time, and then they're less bad for a period of time. Does this look like we are cycling towards just more and more, or a different 
up-down cycle of worse storms and less intense storms? What, what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Yeah, so we sort of see this up and down El Nino and La Nina. It's this oscillation in the climate system related to a natural warming and cooling in the tropical Pacific, and it impacts the northern hemisphere jet stream. So you see those variations from year to year, but there's a rising tide on which they're superimposed, uh, and that's climate change. And so while we'll see years that are less active and years that are more active, again, the data show this clear trend towards larger outbreaks and more destructive storms. Now, here's the thing. The FEMA chief did talk about this in terms of a new normal. Um, I hate to point this out, but that's a best case scenario. A new normal is we have this elevated level of risk. We have to find a way to deal with it. Uh, we know what we have to deal with. But that's in the in the scenario where we don't warm the planet anymore. If we continue to warm up the planet, we continue to burn fossil fuels and generate carbon pollution, then we'll see more warming and we'll see more exacerbation of many of these impacts, including the impacts on tornadoes that we're seeing. And so it really underscores the importance of preventing further warming of the planet by bringing those carbon emissions down dramatically. And it comes back to policy. It comes back to politics. It comes back to, you know, the Build Back Better bill. Um, passing that with climate provisions intact so the U.S. can make good on its obligations. That brings other actors on the world stage to the table um, when the United States leads here. And the first step there is by making good in, on our commitments. And that means codifying the Biden administration's policies with legislation, with Build Back Better. Before I have to let you go, Professor, briefly, these changes in terms of the emission of fossil fuels and so forth, they're not just affecting the areas where their emissions were in terms of more severe weather, right? I, I, don't, I don't think it's accurate to say that these tornadoes are happening where they happened because there were stronger or higher emissions in that particular area, right? It's not, it's, it, we're, we're, all, we're each affecting one another much more broadly than that, right? Before we go? Yeah, no, it's sort of a coincidence that Oklahoma and uh, Texas are oil states, traditional oil states, and that's where we used to see the worst tornado activity. That's a coincidence. Um, yeah. And uh, the, the, the CO2 is global. As we put CO2 into the atmosphere, it doesn't matter where we do it. It builds up in the global atmosphere, warms up the planet. Penn State Professor Michael Mann. Professor, I appreciate you helping us make some sense of this storm. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking with you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.